What's up, everyone? We are live uh, coming to you from our studio. My name is Sal Sincata, and uh, today I think we got a really good course episode for you, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but we are going to be doing five different looks with one light. So we're going to do some one light portraits. Uh, before we get started and all that, let's just do some uh, housekeeping here, uh, making sure I got my team here. Can everybody hear me okay? Let us know in the chat. You should see a chat there as well. Let us know you can hear us. Sound off. Where are you from uh, already this, mor uh, this morning? This evening. Uh, I've been talking to people. I see we've got a bunch of people from Australia uh, and all, all over the uh, United States and New Zealand. We'll give you a shout out. We don't want to forget about you uh, too, just because you're all down under. Um, but I think we got a good episode. How's audio doing? We good? We solid? All right. Well, my name is Sal Sincata. I am a wedding and portrait photographer, and uh, I get to travel the world and do the things I love. So if you're a photographer, you know what that's all about. And uh, today, I just want to share with you some knowledge uh, that I have. Take it for what it's worth. Uh, you know, and I always say when it comes to portraits and lighting, season uh, to taste, right? And my way is not the absolute uh, way. Uh, you've got to take what I'm showing you and put it to use. And I think what makes today very exciting, I should say, is that we have a uh, one, we're using one light. So sometimes I get a lot of uh, heat uh, from people online because we'll shoot with five, six, seven different lights to light up a portrait. Uh, and, you know, that becomes quite expensive. So I'm going to show you what we can do with one light. I think we can do some really cool stuff. Uh, and behind me today, we have the beautiful Peyton uh, there in a uh, getup that is just uh, stunning. Uh, kudos to Brandy. She's off camera. She did the uh, hair and makeup uh, for this. Alyssa uh, did the styling. She's also producing today. Uh, she's out of camera. We'll get her to jump on here every uh, once in a while uh, for sure. But how are we doing? Audio is good? A little low? It's cranked all the way up, guys. Let's see. You might want to – let's – crank up that one. You can do some gain here. I might be too loud. Oh, well, you can lower the headphones. Um, more housekeeping. You better stay tuned. Watch the whole thing because we're going to give away a pro photo A1X at the end of this. Is that right? Or did I just make that okay. up? We are. Okay. We're going to give away four pro photo no. A1X. No, pro photo and B&H is are having a meltdown right now. Um, but we are giving away one Pro Photo A1X. So stay through to the end because I am going to pick one lucky winner. This is not a lie, not a scam. Uh, you're going to get a Pro Photo A1X. Now, uh, I will tell you from Pro Photo, uh, who's with us today? Cliff from Pro Photo should be in the chat. Cliff, sound off if you're in there. We've got Gabe from B&H also in there. So if you've got some questions about maybe the uh, equipment and want to start getting into some of the tech questions about it, these guys are gonna be able to handle all that for you. If you got any questions about creativity, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, sound off, my team is there. We'll try and answer those questions. So let's just kind of get into the gear, shall we? I am using a, uh, I'm shooting tethered. So all the images you're gonna see uh, today are completely unedited, straight out of camera. Uh, and uh, we'll, you know, we've been, uh, you know, just messing around with light here. Uh, if you kind of want to see, this was just a test shot that we threw up uh, for that, if we can get that up. The test shot. Yeah. Okay. And um, so you're seeing, we're just messing around here before we went live on air uh, to give you a sense of what we're doing. So uh, I'm shooting tethered. I've got a Canon EOS R. Uh, I've also got a uh, the 24105 uh, F4. Uh, I think it's even their kit lens, uh, but I'm going to be using that today. So normally I'm shooting with a 50 millimeter 1.2, 85 millimeter 1.2. But for the portraits in here, that's not what we're going to uh, shoot with. So I'm going to work with this 24-105. It's going to give me a bunch of range. And like I said, everything you're seeing is completely unedited. And then what will end up happening is uh, after the shoot, I'll pick my favorite 3, 4, 5, uh, and then get it off to my editing team. And if you go back to the same page that you're watching on, uh, we will um, uh, get these images posted. So you can see final, right? We're going to clean things up uh, and make it more polished and evened out. Um, Right. But also keep in mind, you're going to see me pulling out my light meter uh, the entire time today uh, to get uh, lighting set up. I, I like it to be as close to perfect as possible. Uh, sure, you can fix some stuff in, in Lightroom and with these raw files. Nowadays, you can push your image a stop. Sometimes you can push it two stops. Uh, but why? Just get your shit right uh, and do it right in, in camera. So it just seems to make sense for me. So let's get metered in. So what we're going to do here is uh, right. I've got a pro photo trigger. I'm just going to turn on our light meter. I'm shooting at ISO 200, shutter speed of 200. The shutter speed's at 200 because we're uh, syncing uh, with the camera. And I'm going to show you a lot of times when we're shooting in studio, people think, well, you got so much natural light in there. 
you'll see at uh, F4, F5, 6, uh, at ISO 200, she's, there's no natural light uh, hitting her uh, or no real usable natural light hitting her. But I'll show you a frame so you can see it. But let's get metered in here. Audio better? All right. So we've got uh, F4. We'll do it again. So I'm at F4.05. And uh, the reason I want to make this adjustment now is I want to go up that half stop. I want to get to either 5.6 flat or uh, or 4 0 flat. So I'm going to go up. And with the Profoto trigger, I'm just changing it from here, right? So I'm moving it up uh, 5 tenths of a stop. That should get us to 5.6.0. We'll see. And we're at 409, so I'll push it up one more tenth of a stop. And right now I'm at 5.6 flat. So that's, I'm dialed in. Now I'll adjust on camera. And I don't uh, meter in before every shot. I, I, there, to me, there's no point in that. Uh, your lighting's not changing, right? So now I'm, I'm at uh, 5.6. Um, let me get you set up here. So when I, let me start shooting. So I'm at 5.6 on camera, ISO 200, uh, 200th of a second, and I'm using the 24-105, and I'll be zooming in and out. So it's an F4 lens, doesn't matter because I'm already shooting at 5.6. So if I needed something faster, uh, usually that would be outside if I wanted to shoot high-speed sync, which the lights absolutely support. Uh, we'll go from there. So before I start shooting, I know you're probably dying for me, just south, stop freaking talking and start shooting. Uh, but what we're doing today, and you could see behind me uh, what we've got. So we're going to do some cool stuff. So we're going we're gonna to move off to shooting a portrait with a Profoto A1X and the dome diffuser. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Uh, we're also gonna do it with a reflector, right? So we're doing one light portrait, but make no mistake, one light portrait is one light. You should still use a reflector, uh, you know, white card, you know, anything that's gonna fill, is you're still using one light, but we'll get to that. Uh, here we've got a, an umbrella. We've got the uh, large deep white umbrella with the sock on it. We're gonna use that first. It's gonna give us some nice soft light, but what's gonna be even softer is when we get to this light, and this is a uh, five foot octa. And so we're gonna make a bunch of one light portraits. And then last thing I'm gonna do is shoot with this uh, two foot OCF beauty dish. And uh, we're gonna use just the continuous light. A lot of people don't realize that the uh, Profoto B10 and B10 Plus offers continuous lighting. and Man, if you shoot indoors at all, like let's say you're doing bridal prep, stuff like that, and you don't want to start firing flash all over the place and you want this kind of what you see is what you get, this light, the B10, B10 Plus, with that uh, small beauty dish on it, absolutely perfect for those situations because now I can turn that light on. And this is, you might be thinking, oh, Sal, uh, this already does, you know, our lights that we have already do it. The difference is, the difference is, it's not daylight balance, right? They're not meant to be used as continuous light. And so with the pro photo in the continuous light, what ends up happening is, you know, as you can see this, this is daylight balance, right? And not only is it daylight balance, and I'll show you when we start shooting, I can adjust the color temperature. And it might be hard to see here. Uh, yeah, there you go. You're seeing it change color. It's going from cool uh, and it's going uh, to warm, right? It's getting that orange glow. Might be tough to pick up on the video cameras. But now if you're shooting, how many times have you shot where you're indoors and it's got all the orange lights, right? The tungsten lights, bam, this will balance with that. Or you're, you've got some natural light leaking in. You don't want everything to go orange. You've got the daylight in there as well. So really, really powerful. I'll show you what we can do. We'll do some nice portraits with just this. So really what I'm trying to share with you guys is how I work uh, kind of in real world situations, whether you're indoor, outdoor, not much changes when it comes to light. You know, you might have to go into high speed sync stuff like that, but you still need to understand your light uh, modifiers. All right, so let's get this over here. Peyton, you ready? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna put this here. We're gonna do, I mean, this is a pro photo event. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do like product placement. You know, like when you open uh, like on the sitcoms and they open up the uh, cabinets and like, you know, it's a box of Cap'n Crunch or something. It's like perfect product placement. All right, here we go, look at this. Look at that, huh? I mean, you can't get, you can't get better product placement than that, unless I got like a pro photo tattoo on me somewhere. All right. Okay. I'm not my tattoo. Which one? The tramp stamp or the? Okay. Yeah. The pro photo tramp stamp. I like it. All right. Peyton, you ready? Okay. 
So uh, let's have some fun with it uh, in the beginning. So guys, I'm going to shoot away. There's a little bit of a delay before it hits the laptop. So I'm going to shoot a bunch of frames. Remember, I'll give you, if you forgot, I'm at ISO 200, 200 of a second, F5.6. I'm using the 24105 uh, Canon kit lens. I'm also shooting with the EOS R. Okay, so let's go here. Going right in on this. Here we go. One, two. One more. One, two. Love that. Let's go vertical. I love that, Peyton. Hold that. One, two. One, two. Looking at that light. What if you turn your chin like you're looking there? Yeah. There you go. Here we go. I want to make sure I'm getting focus on her eye. Perfect. Now I'm going to pull back just a little bit more. I love that, Peyton. Here we go. One, two. Come back at me. Love that. I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to pull back here a little bit. And I'm probably down to your waist. There you go. One, two. Fun. Fun. Oh, that's fun right there. Love that. Okay. So let's see what we got. We got a bunch of frames popping up here. Get to what we got going on here. Hold on. They're all coming in. This is good. Okay, so I like this straight on. Hold on, let's get, here we go. So here we are, five, six, right? I'm shooting zoomed in. You're gonna see uh, on the edge, right? The paper's just not wide enough. That's something that's gonna take me two seconds. It's not uncommon, right? People are shooting on, unless you're shooting on a psych wall, you're gonna have that edge or you get super wide paper. So th that should not be what you get tripped up on. That stuff's easy in post-production to just do a you know, clone stamp, bam, and it's uh, filled in or even cropped in. So for the first set of shots, what I want is just this kind of like headshot. I love the red and the, and the blue popping. And remember, this is straight out of camera. So we haven't had a chance to start playing with any of this and mixing colors, right? Getting vibrancy, saturation, any of that stuff together. So that's all stuff you're going to fix or uh, figure out. I don't want to say fix. You're going to stylize in post-production, right? Very much the way you would grade a uh, film. Uh, you're going to do the same thing with your images. At least you should be doing that, right? I'm not big on this like straight out of camera stuff like that. That's not me. Lighting, your posing, uh, your composition, that stuff are the bones of your image. To me, that's the stuff you should be trying to get perfect uh, in camera, right? Because I don't want to sit here and like, you know, lift shadows and, and start really degrading the image. Uh, but stylizing that image, grading that image, right, is something we would do in cinema. That stuff, I'm all for it in post, right? So I love the, the color uh, palette on this, right? Let's keep going through some of these. Uh, Pam wants me to repeat my settings. So settings are uh, uh, ISO 200, uh, 200th of a second, F5.6, right? And I'm in manual mode. So that's something else. When I'm in studio in an uh, environment like this with studio lighting, I'm in manual mode all the time. If I'm on location, uh, shooting or I'm shooting a wedding, like real, real time. I'm in aperture priority all the time. Ugh. You are proving nothing to anyone by being in manual mode. It is like this ridiculously stupid badge of honor that photographers like to wear. But I got news for you. When you're on a wedding day and you're chasing a bride around and you're turning one direction here to take a picture, and then the bride's coming down the aisle this way to take a picture, and then somebody's doing something over here and you're jerking around with manual mode, you've missed tons of shots, right? Should you know your exposure triangle? Of course. Um, but you've got longtime pros who've shot in P. P, wrap your mind around that, program mode, right? So I shoot an aperture priority because why? I care about the depth of field. That's what I care about. I'm not really interested in uh, my shutter speed, right? It's not, I'm not shooting sports or anything like that unless my shutter dips too low. But mostly I want the camera to do the other part. Creatively speaking, I want aperture priority. However, here in studio, it's all dialed in. So I'm gonna stay in manual mode because I know I'm not shooting left, shooting right, shoot right. I'm taking one set shot where the lighting is not, the lighting conditions are not changing. So hopefully that makes sense. Good question. Let's get back to what we shot here. These are fun, right? These are fun images uh, to be looking at. The, the color, the hair, the expression, right? She's got this just kind of like expressionless, Look, I don't want to say dead because she's not dead, um, but I like this the way this looks because it plays with the outfit. We don't want her smiling. How ridiculous is that going to look? Like if she's just sitting there all happy, like, hey, girl, why are you happy wearing a red dress, red wig, and some red chiffon on your head? 
Oh, they said that in the comments? Sorry, I didn't see your comments. Um, why would she smile? It's ridiculous. Smile, Peyton. Stop being so happy, Peyton. No, I want this dead stare. I'll make her smile for you, okay? We'll take some pictures of her uh, smiling. But you'll see it doesn't look the same when she's smiling and uh, happy. So um, let's keep going back to uh, what we got here. So I really like this. Uh, this is fun. Now notice you're just seeing, that's fun too, when she's looking up at the light. Now, um, what you're seeing here, right, good, her skin, uh, everything, these are just going to edit uh, incredibly well. Now, what you are seeing, notice here is, I'm going to come back and shoot this, right? So this is bad on me, right? Look at this. This is horrible. I, sh I, I don't know why anybody would want to watch me shoot, right? See that right there? Were you cutting the hand off? Oh my God, that is amateur hour. Ab absolutely amateur hour. So I'm gonna shoot that again to redeem myself. But if you're in the field and you're working, how many of you are cutting off joints, right? It's really bad to cut off fingers, hands uh, at the joint. That's kind of the rule, right? So I'm kind of working through this, not paying attention. I need to pay more attention. Uh, but I like to slow down, look at the back of camera so I can catch these mistakes now and then circle back around to it, right? So what I'm trying to balance, you can already tell, is not get wider than the backdrop without cutting uh, parts of her body off. But I just need to deal with that. Yes? I would love to know how far she is from the background. Uh, so the question is, how far is she from the background? I would say she is a solid uh, five and a half, six feet uh, from the background. Uh, so she's that's why you're seeing so much fall off, right? So uh, this is a good conversation. We're talking about lighting. Um, that background's going a darker blue, right? It's actually, if we had real light in it, it's kind of a brighter blue, but I want it to be a little darker. I don't want it bright. This is my choice. This is that season to taste we talked about in the beginning. You do you, I'm going to do me. If I move her closer to the background, that light fall off uh, won't be the, be the same, right? So the more light will hit the back, background, right? The inverse square law of light. So what's happening right now is because, you know, I've got light hitting her at F6. If I had to guess, let's see, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say, well, let's get some side bets on this, all right? What do you think the light, let's see, side bets right now. Poor pro photo. They're like, this is, he's off script. This is not what we're supposed to be doing. No bets. Okay. Gambling's illegal. Here we go. What do you think? If the light's hitting her at five, six, what do you think the light is hitting that backdrop on her? Put, your, put it in the comments. How, how many stops of light you think we're, we're losing? Okay. From five, six hitting her. To that background. I know what I think. I'm, I'm going to guess. Okay. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Can I tell you? And then you could say if I'm right or not. Oh, you oh, can hear my mic. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to say. See the number? Yep. All right. My team has seen the number. Let's go measure it. It's the same difference, right? No. Sure it is. If you if five six is hitting her, and somebody says it's one stop of light, that means that's four zero, oh. right? Same difference. What you showed up, did you? Oh, what I showed you is the actual f stop. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> hold on. Yep. No. You're there. It won't focus. What if it's here? There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah. The number. What number did I tell you? They said 2-0. Oh. 2-0. Oh. Say it louder because two. two. I said two. All right. So I just, I knew from doing this, I knew eventually that's how much light was going to fall off, right? So it's 5-6. That's hitting her. And 2-0 oh to the background. Okay. So that's 5-6 to 4-0, oh, one stop of light. 4-0 oh to 2-8, another stop of light. 2-8 to 2-0, oh, another stop of light. So there's three stops of light fall off behind her. So that's why that's dark blue. The closer I start moving her to that background, that light gap is going to be different. So if you want to change the way your backdrop looks, all you've got to do is move somebody closer or, or further away. And that's going to either make it darker or brighter, especially when you're with one light. This is awesome exercise uh, to understand all that. You were saying what? Somebody said. A lot of people were saying 2 -0. A lot of people were saying 2 0. Well, you had a lot of 2 0 and 2 8. 2 0 and 2 8. All right. So we got some people who know what's going on. I just wish I was the only one who got it right. Then I could, <laughs> I could feel better about myself, everybody. But no, no, everybody. 
I win the A1X. It's fixed. It's rigged. Oh. Um, okay, we got to stop dicking around. Here we go. Okay, so let's get back to uh, doing this with her. And I'm going to try and get, so I got wide and I cut off your hands, right? So I got to be better at that. Uh, and I want you to give me uh, a little bit more attitude with your body. Yes, love that right there. That's stunning. Okay, you want to smile so we can show them you smiling? Yeah. All right, here we go. Hold on. One, two. Okay, that's the only picture of you smiling for the rest of the day. Here we go. Love this. One, two. One, two. Stay at me. Chin down. Down more. Yep. One, two. One, two. Chin this way. And eyes at me. Yep. One, two. Chin this way. Yep. One, two. Good. Have some fun with it. Oh, I like that. Get the hands up, Peyton, like you had them before. No, yeah, like there. I like that. And tilting your head. That's perfect, Peyton. One, two. Stay there. One, two. Don't move. Here we go. One, two. Stay there. Don't move. And one, two. Okay. So now I'm going to let all these start loading up, and then I'll show you. Now what I want to do with this, by the way, is add uh, a little bit of fill, right? Because the light is, even though it's soft, it's a big light source. Um, it's not quite five feet. I think this is 36 inches. Somebody at Photo tell me I don't want to get my size wrong. You know how guys are. We always think things are bigger than they really are. 51 inches. Okay. Well, it is bigger. All right. So uh, it's 51 inches. Um, and so we've got a five foot octa uh, as well. So uh, what we've got here is you're going to see these images popping up. Did you, can you cut to this? Uh, and you could see, right, it's one light. So there's fall off, fall off to her dress. Right. So what do I do if I want some fill on this? So I don't want to bring in a second light. Right. I want to bring I want to bring in um, uh, or just a simple reflector. Right. So let's do it. Alyssa is going to help me. So you've got silver white. We're just going to use uh, white and fill in. Uh, some of these shadows. So I'm going to take two shots. Let's do one without first. Okay, so I'm just going to take a headshot. First, uh, sweep right. There's just one hair. There you go. You got it. Good. Perfect. Um, there we go. Good there. Chin out, down, and right there. Perfect. Don't move for two shots. All right, so this first shot that I'm taking uh, that you're going to see is being taken with one, the one light. Here we go. One, two. Okay, she's not going to move, and I'm just going to bring in this reflector and put this right on her waist. So even with one light, uh, put that on her waist. Hold that for me, uh, Peyton, can you? Yeah, right there. So even with that one light now, I can get a, a nice look of her. Here we go, one, two. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna have these two pull up. Okay, so here's the one shot uh, without and here it is with. So this is without. This is just uh, the one light. Notice the shadow on the left side of her face. Notice the shadow underneath her chin. Uh, by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. It, that's that's going to edit really, really nice. Um, now let's look at what that light did pushing up underneath, right? So you can see the difference side by side on that. You can see the difference uh, of what's happening there, right? Just filling in, filling in those uh, shadows. So if you wanted something that was dark and dramatic uh, or kind of sh some shadow, right? Or just shaping the side of the face, you just do it with that one light, even though it's a big soft light, you do that, bring in a reflector, it's gonna fill those shadows, okay? So now, yeah, hit me. Yeah, this would be a little bit tough. If I wanted a full length photo here, let's do it. So here's what I would do, right? I, I, I haven't done it, but let's do it. I know that the light's falling off, right? I've got to let some ambient in. I've got to drag the shutter. So what I would do here is drop my shutter from 200th of a second to 100th of a second. So I'm going to take two shots right now. I'm going to take one at 200 so you can see the fall off full body. And then I'm going to take another at 100. Uh, and in theory, right, just based on what I know, uh, that should let more light give it more time to reach the bottom. So let's do it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to be full body on you. Remember, I'm at 200th of a second now. Yep, here we go. One, two. Okay, now I just took that one frame and I'm going to go down to 100th of a second. Here we go. One, two. 
and let's see the difference in those two. So here's the uh, shot uh, with it uh, fall off at her legs. Yeah, it's subtle, it's not enough. So this starts becoming a bit of a problem with one light, right? So you've got to reposition the light. Uh, you've got to, right, we could drop this light down, add a secondary light. Uh, we can also add a reflector to push in some light there as well. So we could, in theory, use the reflector. I, it's not what I want to teach right now, but we can use that. Now, oh, fuck it, let's do it. All right, so what we can do is try and push a little bit of light here coming in from this uh, light, right? So that's something we can do. Now, if we're talking real world scenario, it's not how I would light it. I would have a second light, right? So, but screw real world, let's do it. Let's have some fun. Okay, there we go, right there. Right there, perfect. One, two. Okay, I have no idea what that's gonna look like. Let's see. But again, the real answer, in my opinion, is a second light. So this becomes a limitation in some of the things you're doing. Yeah, it's not enough, looks like shit. So I wouldn't be doing this with one light. That fall off is just not gonna give me what I'm looking for. Maybe I could drop down to 4.0, 2.8, uh, but it's just, it's not how I would light this shot. I would seat her, let's do that. Have you guys figured out where there is no script today? So let's do whatever you want. All right. Yeah, we're still on the first light. All right, so what I want you to do here is uh, sit and uh, you know spread your stance, get wide with your body. Uh, and what I'm gonna do here, guys, I'm actually gonna leave this light up here. Probably gonna twist it just a little bit. Now, of course, I've changed her position. So what I wanna do is uh, meet, meet her in, because I know the lighting has changed from her standing up to her sitting down. So let's get a meter reading here, right? And you gotta realize doing stuff like this just takes Two minutes, not even two minutes, two seconds, right? So I'm metering in, and sure enough, she's at 4.05. So I'm actually gonna drop this down a half a stop using the Profoto trigger. I can change all that. 4.01, one more tenth, 4.0 flat. So now I'm at 4.0 flat. And you might be wondering why, why'd you go 4.0 flat, any of that other stuff? There's no reason. I just wanted to have a softer looking uh, portrait, that's all. Yeah. This light is not feathered. The, the center of the light is here above her head. So in a sense, it is, it is feathered up a little bit, uh, but it's not feathered completely. And the reason for that, with this type of light and the location of that light, is you will end up getting shadows under the eyes, right? So sometimes you'll see photographers have that light directly. Let's do it. All right, so I'm just gonna drop this for a second. And what I'm gonna do is twist this so that it's coming straight down on top of her. And I'm gonna take a shot so you can see that. Okay. So can they see from that? Yeah, there they go, they can see that. Okay, so the center of the light is here. So just to give you perspective, I'm in front, the center of the light's in front of her. So it is hitting with the, the outside edge of, of the uh, umbrella. Let me meet her in. And you're gonna see, I, I'm not a big fan of this. I've seen a lot of photographers do it. Uh, it's tough to do with only one light. Okay. Yep, that's what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna, I gotta get metered in. Anytime that light moves, I gotta get metered in. Okay, so now, because of the way I moved it, it's at five, six again. I want it to be softer. So I'm gonna shoot this, I wanna try and shoot this at uh, F4. So I know I gotta come down to full stop. So again, I'm just using the Pro Photo Trigger. Makes it super easy to change settings. And I'm at 4.0 flat now. Okay, so I'm shooting this at F4, ISO 200, shutter speed back to 200, okay? Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you're gonna see, and it'll pop up here automatically. Yeah, there you go. I'm just gonna focus on your face. Here we go for this one, one, two. 
Okay. Now you're going to see what ends up happening, and I'll go. I'll come back and shoot some full body. So what will end up happening here? Oh crap! Sorry guys, I said F4 and I never adjusted that. See, we all make mistakes. All right, I'm going to shoot a bunch. Here we go. So let's go ahead get your legs right. Love that. So I'm going to shoot some full body, so we get a sense of this light and the fall off. One two. One, two, go ahead. Oh, I love that, love that, love that. Good, now let me get straight at your face. Here we go, one, two. Okay. So what's happening here as we come through, right, you seeing that light? I just, I don't love it. And I see a lot of photographers that'll shoot that way, but that I think it's misleading because when they shoot that way with it down, this is something that you'll see like any Leibowitz do, uh, like that Vanity Fair style. It's this overhead soft light. But a lot of people, if you're not really paying attention, you think that's the only light in the scene. Uh, and it's really not. There's usually a secondary light pushing something uh, forward. So if I really want to, and this isn't what we were gonna teach today, I would add a second light, but let's do it. And I know it's going to be hard to see, so I'm just going to take a few frames so you can see it. I'm just going to wing the settings on this. I have no idea if that's right or not. Uh, you know what? Previews take too long with this thing, so let me meter this in. Okay, that's on channel B. Okay. That's only pushing out 2.0. So I would say we don't want to be as heavy as the main light. We want to be a little bit softer than the main light, right? We're just kind of using this one for fill. So let's see what it looks like, uh, and I'll show you, the, uh, show you the picture. So let me just get something up top here. Here we go, one, two. Okay, and see if this fills. Yeah, it's a significant difference. So if we look at the difference in this setup, right, you guys can see that the one on the right's got that forward pushing light and it's, it's really soft. It's not like it's a hard light, it's really soft. But that one on the left has got these overhead shadows and look, th there's not necessarily anything wrong with it. It's just, it depends on the look that you're absolutely going for. So. For shot setups like this, uh, what tends to happen is I like two lights. That's the way I like it. Um, I like to get two lights pushing in there. Now, today we're talking mostly about one light. So uh, hopefully this is making sense. So if you've got questions, I want to reset uh, what we're doing. Brandy, can you do me a favor? The part of that dress um, is just like curling out. I don't know what the deal is with her. Uh, with it, Peyton, I'm going to have you stand up. We'll go back to a different light source. All right, so what I'm going to do now... I'm going to get rid of this overhead light. We'll turn this off. Yeah, I'll tell you as soon as I get in front of, uh, front of her. Any questions, guys? Our wedding? Okay. Where? No. It is? Oh, yeah. All right. That's fine. So now what we're going to do is I've got the Profoto Octa. And what's going to end up happening is you're going to see a different shape when it comes to the light or a different, different softness when it comes to light. So the first one we're using was an umbrella uh, that we were shooting with. And it was you know reflecting into the umbrella, filling that umbrella, and pushing that light out. Now the light is a little bit more direct. Uh, we've got a five-foot Octa box. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. There's no internal baffling uh, on this, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fire this at her, but really, really uh, close. So what we're gonna do is create a very large light source, and this should give us a completely different look just by go, drop, same light, by the way, but going to a different light source. So what I'm gonna do here is go with that. I do wanna change my lens. I'm going to switch now to an 85 millimeter. So remember, I'm on the EOS R. 
going to switch over to the 85 millimeter. Give this a check second to find itself. Any other questions while I'm switching lenses? Now, don't forget, if you're just tuning in, uh, what we are going to have happen here is uh, we are going to, hold on, let me flip this off. We're going to be giving away an A1X at the end. So don't disappear. We're going to be giving away an A1X uh, for sure. So, yes, ma'am. Uh, the light stands with the wheels. Uh, this is uh, an Avenger light stand. Uh, I am a huge fan of the Avenger light stand. Uh, you can get them with wheels, but there's one other stand we have. Uh, it's actually a small, tiny backdrop stand, uh, and it's a mini Avenger, I guess, that you would call it. And that's what I use for the, for a backlight, right? So I'm, you ever have the, you have those big light stands and you want a backlight, and I, the model has to like find a way to block it. Uh, this gives you uh, the, a little one. I don't want to wander on you on set here, everybody, but I want to show it to you. Anybody know where that went? Ah, here it is. Got it. It's like a magic show. Now he's out. And now, uh, so this is the uh, uh, small Avenger. Uh, this is super cool, guys. This is the Avenger um, A0010. I looked it up recently, and I don't think that's still the same uh, model number or part number, but you can see this is meant uh, to go back uh, on the floor and have that uh, backlight. So super uh, practical uh, with that. Yep. Yeah, so B&H is running a special uh, on the B10 and they have a one light and two light kit. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so B10 or B10 plus. So you can get the B10 or B10 plus, which is what we're using here today. Single kit or dual kit. And then they're also doing 10% off all OCF modifiers. But the, the discount is on the kit, right? They're giving a discount? It's 10% off any B10, B10 Plus. So it's 10% off any B10 or B10 Plus. And I always get the, and any modifiers. So I always get the question, Sal, which would you use? Which would you recommend? Uh, we did a webinar a few weeks back uh, showing the B10 and B10 Plus, And everybody's like, should I get the B10 or get the B10 Plus? Here's my advice to you. If your work is in studio, uh, you will probably never, I, I always hate saying never, but you will probably never need the B10 Plus. The B10 will be more than enough light for you. However, if you are on location outdoors at all, that extra stop, stop and a half of light, invest in the B10 Plus. I know there's a price point difference, but that light will have a lot more longevity for you if you're ready to make the investment. Plus, you're getting 10% off. Take advantage of that. Uh, and the B10 Plus is uh, one of my favorite uh, lights. I mean, it is what we are using on location. And then the next thing you would want to consider is their, uh, this uh, beauty dish. So this is their OCF um, two foot beauty dish. This is so practical for being out on a wedding day and, and shooting weddings. Because this kit, I mean, think about this, right? Now your assistant, you're not walking around with light stands, they're just walking around with this, right? And so this is what your assistant's doing and they're holding that light, you know, the way they the way they should be, right? So it's it becomes much more practical. So on a wedding day, this is how Alyssa is working with this. She's holding this just like this, handheld, no light stands or anything like that, and that allows us to get those shots that you see uh, that we get. We're doing it with this, guys. So if you if you look at my portfolio, and if you haven't had a chance, please do. I encourage you to uh, go to salsincata.com. Uh, but if you go to my website and you're looking at my work and you see those dramatic landscape type uh, portraits, that's it. This is my setup. 90% of the time. It's either this with the two uh, foot beauty dish or no beauty dish at all. I'm just firing a, a bare bulb hard light uh, for that. So that's my, my normal getup. Um, I feel like I'm being tested here by the Canon EOS utility. This refuses to activate. Stand by. Should have known better. All right, any other questions as we go? Here we go, remote shooting activated, and we are ready to rock and roll. Okay, so now I've got my 85 millimeter on. Oh, I didn't dial in, let's dial in.
All right, so now I'm gonna see, we've got this big soft light next to her. I'm gonna meet her right here. And I've got F4. So we've got F4 flat. You know what, but let's go a little bit, let's go softer, because now I got a faster lens on. So I wanna drop this a stop. So again, I'm just gonna drop this one stop on the, on the trigger. So I'm looking to get to 2.8. I think I have the wrong channel, sorry. Okay. Now I'm at 282, so let's drop it two more tenths. And I'm at 28 uh, flat. Okay. So now, let's see what this is going to look like. So now I'm hoping I get a little bit softer light. Here we go. And I'm shooting it with my 85. Now, one of the things I love about Canon, and here we go, let me get this shot. Here we go, one, two. I fire. Here we go. There we go. All right, let's see what we're getting, and then I'm going to shoot away, see if I can get some good shots of uh, Peyton for my own portfolio. Yeah, look at that, guys. Look how much softer <laughs> that light is compared to what we were getting here. This is with the reflector. Right, and that's without. So that one in the top left is no reflector. That was the big uh, umbrella. Um, the one to the right was when we were using a reflector for some fill. And now look at the one on the bottom. Look at how different these all look. One light. I'm obsessed with that bottom one. That one I like a lot. I don't know if everybody else likes it, but you know what? I don't really care. Um, I really like that. So what we can do here with this particular shot is maybe wrap this light a little bit more around her. So I want to come back to the wide shot so they can see. Go to the rear shot so they're seeing from there. So look at where this light is in relation to her, right? You're getting a better sense of how we're, we're kind of a bunch of this light is forward and it's going to fire uh, around her. So what I can do is if I want to wrap it a little bit more is just come here. And what's going to happen is, is I'm going to have to shoot and cheat right off the edge of this uh, to get that. Just sweep that hair, you got some hairs, right? Yeah, on your cheeks. Brandy, fix her bangs and sweep that hair off. Can you yeah. Tell them what model Siconic, uh, yeah, uh, Siconic. So this is the Siconic uh, 478DR. Uh, it's a digital, uh, digital color screen. Uh, you know, they've got the, the old school uh, one, the gray one. I don't know if you guys remember that one. That was my favorite. Uh, and then I broke it and then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna upgrade, I'm gonna get something new. And that's when I realized I'm becoming an old man. Like you get st stuck in your ways and you want to stick with that stuff. Uh, and so now I got this guy and it's, it's color. Great. It's like when your dad's like, <laughs> it's like when, you, when, when we were younger, it's like, you know, what my grandparents were like, I, who needs this fancy digital TV? I could just turn the dials. What's wrong with the dials? You're lazy. Okay. So, but that's that. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right. This on me? No, I'm, I'm fine. No, it's not hitting her. All right, here we go. So let's get um, a nice portrait of her up tight here. So you're going to be right at me. Okay, here we go. Chin this way, just a dinch. Yep, one, two. Stay there. See, what's happening is now I got to cheat with this here, but these look pretty good. Here we go, one, two. One, two. Turn your face toward looking at that light. Yeah, and maybe your eyes are here. Here, yeah, right there. And get your hands up into this frame because I'm super tight. Here we go. One, two, one, two, love that, stay there. Cheating with your eye, just give me your eyes. Yep, chin down, I love that, stay there. Okay, so now uh, I'm cheating a little bit by wrapping that. So you can see the difference here in the softness of that light. That is really soft, you guys digging those? Now, as we turn her into that, right, it's illuminating her whole face, uh, which I'm not sure I really want anyway. I, I like a little bit of the, huh? You like it? Uh, oh, you guys like it, uh, lighting her whole face like that? See, I like when, it's, when we're there. I really like that. So, oh, that's cool. That's stunning. That's going to edit really, really well. You seeing that of yourself, Peyton? So, just so you know, Peyton smiled. But we're, we're not showing it on camera. That's not allowed. That's, You're strategically 
blocking her. I'm blocking her because she's too freaking happy. All right. Let's get some good pictures of Peyton here. Uh, so I'm going to cheat a little bit more just so I can get a little bit wider because I was cutting into this. So I'm going to shoot. Give me about uh, 90 seconds here. So let's have some fun with this, Peyton. Here we go. One, Perfect. All right, let's do it. One, two. Go ahead, Peyton. Oh, I love that, Peyton. Come back down. Chin down. Right there. Good. Looking at the light. Stay there. Good. Back of me. You go do your thing. Do your business. Good. 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 Right there, Peyton. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Don't move, Peyton. What I want you to do, because this pose I like, is just rotate a little to the light. Yep. Right there. Perfect. And I'm going to explain to you guys what I just did in a minute here. One, two. Stay there. One, two. Don't move on me. One, two. One, two. One, two. Okay. So why did I stop her? You'll notice the way I, I tend to work is uh, I, I kind of let models model, right? But if I see something I want, I got to slow it down and get, uh, get what I'm looking for. And she did something really good, but she was doing it away from the light and away from camera. I don't know if it looks good or not. We're going to see. Uh, but then I told her, hold that, just rotate a little towards that light so we can get the light we want, right? It's all about the light here. So let's go back to this and uh, kind of scrub through. This is a favorite uh, right now. I'm going to flag that. Yeah, stunning. Oh, that's awesome. See, I love how soft. Are you guys seeing how with one light, right, you can do something that's just so soft and those reds. Oh, you digging that or no? I don't know. I like painting straight on. Ooh, okay, I lied. I, I like that. That's amazing. Okay, here we go. Yeah, chin down. Okay, but watch, you're gonna see here as we're getting through this, right? I like these. You see how she's away from that light? So that's what's known as broad light, okay? And that's not what I want in this. It's, uh, it's just not gonna, it's just not gonna give me the look I want. This I like better. Are you seeing the difference? Forget her expression for a second. The difference between these two images when it comes to uh, the light, right? So I really like it on the right uh, a lot better uh, that way. So let's keep pushing through these. Yeah. Tommy wants to know, comparing the umbrella to the Octa, with the soft light, is it the modifier itself that's giving you that soft light, or is it the distance that you are from the subject? So the question is from Tommy, is it, when it comes to the modifier, is it the distance that's giving me the uh, soft light, or is it the, uh, the modifier itself that's giving me the soft light? Um, I would say, so distance does matter, right? The, the closer you put it, to, the larger the light source as it pertains to your subject, uh, the softer the light will be. So of course, we got this really, really close to her uh, on that Octa um, and the umbrella we had further away. I don't know what it is. This is my personal opinion. I personally feel like the Octa is the better uh, light modifier. That's that's my opinion, right? I mean, we could start like World War III in the comments uh, with what you like or don't like. So I feel like the Octa, my go-to, by the way, is the Octa. Uh, it's much easier for me to work with and navigate uh, here, right? And I can, I can just easily start moving this here. It's easier to wrap around. Uh, it's easier to cheat on, uh, with that. So I, I tend to feel like this is a little bit, um, better of a light source. And it's interesting because like I said, this is direct, meaning that light is firing direct at her. There's no inner baffling to soften another layer. Although it, you do have that option. I just don't have it in there. That would make it even softer by the way. Uh, and then with the umbrella, the light's firing back into the umbrella, filling that umbrella, right? So that's more of an indirect uh, light source. Now, the umbrella is not as deep uh, as it could be, right? So it's a deep umbrella, but there's umbrellas that start getting parabolic in shape. And when that starts getting parabolic in shape, different things start happening to the shape of the light, right? So if you ever wondered, like, why do I need a shallow umbrella? Why do I need a deep umbrella? Why do I need parabolic? All these things start changing the behavior uh, in the look and feel of the light. So that's why you end up having so many toys uh, that we like to have as photographers uh, for that very reason, because you just, when you need something, you need something. And you can see in this other camera angle, I mean, if you want to talk about umbrellas, right, this is seven foot. So this is a monster uh, umbrella that is, in, that is also indirect, right? Now, Profoto doesn't make this anymore. So if you want it, just, you know, goes to the highest bidder. 
But um, ProPhoto doesn't make this anymore, but look how large this light source is uh, that will soften that up. So I've used that and put it right on top of people. And it just, it looks like just beautiful north window light, uh, believe it or not. So these are the things you got to start figuring out what you're looking for, right? So I'm trying to teach you guys something today, but uh, if I were doing this on my own with uh, Peyton, uh, I would say I, I want that softer, whimsical feel uh, for the shot. I, now, you can go high fashion with this, and then we can get hard-edged with it, and maybe we'll do that. Let's, it's my damn show. Let's do it. All right. So uh, let me get a few more shots of uh, Peyton uh, with wearing this for myself so I have stuff um, to edit. Uh, but then I'm going to switch to, we're going to do the Pro Photo A1, and that's going to blow you away. I think you're going to like those shots too. All right, so I'm waist up with you. All right, so let's have some fun with it. Here we go, one, two. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love that painting. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is uh, we'll let the computer catch up. I'm going to turn this on, right? So remember guys, everything I'm showing you right now is all pro photo B10. Uh, these are all B10 pluses though. Uh, so I will tell you that, uh, they're B10 pluses because I use these on location. So remember a couple of things, more housekeeping. If you're stay here till the end, uh, you're going to end up, uh, we're going to give away a pro photo a one X live on air. So we're going to call you your email address that you registered with live on air. Um, and we're going to give you a pro photo a one X. Um, and then the second thing is, uh, everything I'm doing, you're going to ask me, what should I get, Sal? Should I get the ProPhoto B10, the ProPhoto B10 10 Plus? Uh, b and and ProPhoto are running a special. Uh, it's only, they're they're going on holiday, correct? Uh, for two weeks or one week? Yeah, so one week, but you have to, they're going to be closed from October 3rd to the 11th. So b and is going to be closed from the 3rd to the 11th. So if you're going to take advantage of this, you're going to want to take advantage of this by the end of the week. So you're going to want to do it by Friday. Uh, take advantage of this, get 10% off. If you've already know you want another one, if you've already got pro photo, uh, add to that. Uh, if not, you know, and this is your first one, now is the time you're never going to really see more than 10% off it just doesn't happen. Um, but I'm using pro pro photo B10 pluses. Uh, but I always get asked, do I need a pro pro photo B10 or B10 plus if you're in studio only, you only need a B10. If you're on location, uh, you really do need the plus that extra stop, stop and a half is going to make a difference, make the investment. Uh, and they've got, like I said, 10% off a single light or a dual light kit. All right. So now we're going to use an A1. Now, a lot of people never really think that using a, uh, a light like this is going to give them the results they want. So, right, because you would say, well, that's a, it's a glorified speed light uh, that you're using. And so maybe it is but I can still do something cool with it. So the key here uh, with this is understanding that this would be bare bulb, right? And that's not how I'm using it. So ProPhoto uh, has the um, dome diffusers. This is one of my favorite modifiers uh, to use with this, right? So it just snaps on, uh, it's magnetic. I believe it comes with the A1. I don't think that's an add-on, it comes with it. Uh, and then this is what I'm gonna use to light her up. And we're gonna do two things. We're gonna shoot it uh, with this, and then we're going to shoot it, bouncing it into a reflector to soften it up even more. So here I'm going direct at her. And I think that could work for the look we want. So I'm going to put that light right here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do on camera, I'm still shooting with my 85. Uh, I'm going to put the uh, light on TTL. So I'm letting the camera tell the flash how much energy to put out. So let's see what we get out of a test shot. Brandy, can you do me one favor? That hair under camera left. You, know, you see how that hair is just curling up under? I saw it on a couple of the old frames. Yeah, thank you. These are the details you try and pay attention to. Sometimes you miss them, but uh, you need those details because editing that stuff, if you saw any of the pictures we were showing, that hair, that's going to be a pain in the neck in uh, post. All right. Which one? Uh, the left. Oh. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean the soft light? Yeah. I can flag this so that um, when uh, when I get the next shot, uh, that we can show them, compare them side by side to show the light, right? Yep. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I'm in TTL, which means the trigger is telling, uh, or the camera, I should say, is telling the light how much to put out. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. I'm just going to take a test shot, see where we're at. Okay, so here we go. 
one, two. Stay there just like that, one, two. Okay, so let's see what we got with that. This is cool. All right, show them that picture. I feel like that's got a very high fashion look. But look at the difference between the two of these, right? So one's got that kind of like high fashion ring flash style look, although that's not how I'm positioning the A1X, right? It's not this high fashion look. And, and it's a little hot. Uh, I'm looking at it on my screen, all the details there. It just looks a little hot. Uh, on the broadcast maybe a little bit, but all the skin details there. Um, and then look at the image on the left, right? So again, you're seeing one light and how we can create these different images. That And I'm curious, which one do you guys like better? Do you like the first image, that softer light, or do you like the harder light uh, coming off that Profoto A1X through the dome diffuser? All right, just depends on what you're going for. But that one on the right looks really, really uh, cool. Which one do you guys like? You like the first one? You like the one on the right, the second one? What do you like? Do you like the, the first image? What do you like? Left image. So we got three to one. I like the uh, second image, so it's three to two. Which one do you like, Peyton? You like the first one too. All right, four to two. What's everybody saying online? Soft. Oh, everybody likes the softer one. Okay. The shiny hair is ruining it for you? Okay, that's interesting. So bring, it, bring me back. So everybody's saying the uh, shiny hair, that's what's doing. But you know what? Uh, I, I feel like the shiny hair is part of that look. But let's let's see if we can tweak this a little. Again, we're just playing with one light. I mean, that's the, that's the goal here. And by the way, if you are a portrait photographer, a senior photographer, even a wedding photographer, you're seeing how we can just use a, a single light but with different modifiers and get different looks. I think that's so important to understand uh, what's going on there. So let's do this again. Uh, now, remember, I was in TTL, so I, I, I'm not always a big fan of TTL. Let's go to 2.5 on power, and let's see what that looks like. So I'm dialing down power a little bit. I'm going to get this out of TTL, and I'm in ma back to manual mode, uh, and let's see what we do. So let's give me a different pose. Maybe hand I'm at your waist up, so I need, yeah, something up there. Yes, right there, right there. Here we go. One, two. Okay. So let's see what we get. Let me get a couple of verticals of you, too. Oh, I love that right there. Do that same pose into that light though. Yep, eyes at me. Right there, perfect, stay there, one, two, one, two, and one, two, one, two. But, all right, let's see what's coming up. So let's see if we could soften that up a little bit. So it's a little softer on the exposure. I like that we're getting shadow behind her. But it's a little bit, it's definitely a little bit harder, right? Maybe it just doesn't, it doesn't fit the scene. So let's see now uh, what we can do. Oh, see, I like that. I do like that. But, okay, let's see what we can do now, still with one light, but let's soften it. So now we're going to take that pro photo reflector uh, and we're going to bounce back uh, into this. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. And for those of you hanging tight, we're almost done. So now what I'm going to do, uh, and uh, I'm going to fire this light. I'm going to turn it up a stop because I'm definitely going to lose a stop uh, firing it. And I'm going to meter this to see if it looks the way I want it to look. Um, and we're going to fire the white light, the white backdrop, sorry. Yeah. I'm going to meter her to see what I'm getting on this reflection. Uh, you want this closer? Okay. So moving closer, and Alyssa's there. You can see that. So what we're doing is using this as a huge light source, right? I mean, we're basically creating this impromptu softbox on location. I've done this uh, for bridal portraits where I don't want to have a softbox out. Alyssa just pulls up the umbrella, bam, bam. I'm just using a Pro Photo A1, and now the light source goes from being this big to being that big, right? And that's a, that's a way to do it, guys. All right, so let's go. Here we go. Okay. Let's go here. So I'm at 2.0. That could be interesting. Let's try it. 2.0. 
I love shooting shallow depth of field. Everybody always complains online. They're like, why are you shooting 2-0? Nothing's in focus. Shut your mouth. It's going to be in focus. All right, here we go. Lean that back. All right, about there. Here we go. All right. So remember, I'm right at your head. Here we go. One, two. Okay. Let's see what we got. We'll see. I haven't, I haven't seen it. We'll see if it's two directional or if you're getting it softer for me. See, dude, that's cool. Yeah, it lights up that background, so it's illuminating the background. So, guys, check, this is awesome that I'm getting to show you guys this. It's not, li listen, it's not like I had uh, uh, a, a week in here and I was practicing everything to see, okay, it's going to fall off the backdrop this perfect way. Like, you're seeing in real time how we're experimenting with some of this stuff, right? So, we're going to make this a little better. Uh, I want to perf perfect it. I've got some shadow on her uh, uh, left cheek. If we can put that image up. Uh, I've got some shadow on her left cheek uh, that you're seeing there. So, we can pull that hair back a little. Uh, but that's because the light's a little directional. So uh, if we can get that fixed, Brandy, just a little bit. Uh, and then, Alyssa, what you're going to do is cheat so that we're here. And you're wrapping it around a little bit more in front of her. Now, you might be asking, you might be wondering, Sal, why would you do this? Okay. So let's just break down the mechanics of it um, on why I would do something like this. Sometimes you can't be on location and have a, a softbox with you, right? So you've got to move fast. And some, this is just perfect uh, for that, to just move fast, get a reflector up. And now the light source is what's changing. So I'm able to create a softer light, uh, you know, even in this condition. Uh, I like shooting at 2.0 because I like that shallow depth of field as well. Uh, and I'm just looking at that light. I'm just going to come down here just a little bit. Okay, so let's shoot away. And now what I've done is rotated Alyssa around so we don't have so much uh, um, directional light. All right, so I'm, again, I'm up at your head again. Here we go, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, I'm going vertical, so I'm down to your waist. Here we go. I like that, I like that. Hold that for me. Chin down, and this way, just a dinch. Yep, I like this, don't move. Stunning, I wanna shoot through it, don't move. Here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two. Wait, one more. I lied. One, two. Good. Okay. Let's see what came up. Okay. So I really do like this. Oh, F2 looking pretty sharp. That's what happens on that Canon EOS R platform, man. That is tack sharp. Sorry, Sony, that sucks so bad, but um, Canon winning. Here we go. All right. <laughs> In fact, we hate Sal. Um, okay, so give me, you're seeing this, guys. Really like this right in here. Okay, look at that. I really, really like this. So, this particular shot, uh, I like uh, for sure. Um, so come back. What do you guys think of this, right? Are you, I would say most people would be shocked uh, to see this with an A1 and a reflector. They would be shocked to see that shot. So if we can pull that shot back up again, I like the way that's working. And so I would be on location, moving quickly with that um, and, uh, and getting a shot that I want. It's a, it's a beautiful portrait and a soft light with a single light. So, I mean, there it is. All right, let's do our last light uh, for this. Hopefully you guys are digging this. But now I'm going to show you continuous light uh, with the uh, Profoto B10 Plus. So the fun part about the continuous light is it's very much, and if you guys got questions while I'm setting this up, let me know. Uh, what I like about the continuous light is it's very much what you see uh, is what you get. And so this is going to allow me, I'm going to shoot this at uh, F12 because I like shooting that way. Uh, and so we're going to turn this on, All right? And I can make this uh, bright, okay? And let's get this up. And now what I see is what I get, and I don't. I think you guys are seeing that there. Uh, so I can move this light right about there. Look at me, straight on, stunning, okay? So now this is continuous light. I've shown it to you. Let me turn this back here. So the continuous light is on here, uh, and I can actually control. I'm going to pull this down one more time. 
let's pull this here, see. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. So the mechanism here, okay, is going to be, you're seeing here, I can control uh, power of the light just by turning that dial. And of course, on the other side of that light, it's getting brighter. Yeah, it's hard to see, sorry. Uh, but it's getting brighter and it's getting uh, darker. So um, what you're gonna do now is I can also control the color temperature. Uh, so I can turn it, did you see that turn more yellow and turn more uh, blue, right? So that's, right now we're gonna use blue, which is more daylight uh, balanced versus tungsten balanced, okay? So that's all built into the light, it's not extra. Uh, and this is perfect for any of those like nighttime shots, if you're a wedding photographer, any of those nighttime uh, shots, and by the way, it's meant to be used as continuous light, right? So don't fall for a modeling lamp. A modeling lamp's not continuous light. It's just basically a glorified light bulb. So you're going to have some of that flicker. The light quality is not going to be good uh, on the B10, B10 Plus. It is actually meant to be used for continuous light. So I think that's important. So now we're going to come up. And now what I see is what I get. I'm going to put my cam camera in aperture priority. There's no need to be in manual mode. I'm going to take the trigger off. So I'm in aperture priority, f1.2, ISO uh, 200. So here we go, one, two, stunning. And so here we go, one, two, chin down just a little. One, two, one, two, perfect, stay there. Love this, good, have some fun, do your business, there you go. We love that, go back to your head down right like that. Fun, fun, fun. Here we go, one, two. Love it, keep going. And yeah, right there, right there. Arms up, love that, hold that. Nope, go back around your elbow. Right there, hold that for me. Let me shoot through it. One, two, one, two, one, two. And I'm gonna go horizontal for the last few. Here we go, one, two, one, two. Okay, so now we're gonna have a bunch of images coming up. Shooting this at F1.2. Uh, sure. The very first one. Uh, hold on. Yep, coming through it. Bam, 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 right here. What about it? You just like that one? So here you go. I'm at F1.2. Okay, there I got the bridge of her nose. Look at her eyeball. That's a pretty sharp eyeball at F1.2. So, you know, another reason I like F1.2, honestly, for portraits, a lot of people don't uh, care for it. I do because I like what it does to skin. Uh, it's going to soften it, right, for sharpening it uh, at 5.6 or 8.0, which a lot of fashion guys will do. You can see some of her hair uh, back here is just getting uh, soft, right? You can see that depth of field just falling out. Look, it's a personal preference thing. It's one of those things season to taste. I like it. This is going to edit real nice. Skin's going to look very porcelain. Uh, but here we are once again. Guys, this is uh, continuous light uh, that we're using uh, to illuminate uh, Peyton on that. And I love the way that looks. And it's, it's a really low profile, uh, small profile uh, to do this. So now again, imagine a night shot of your bride and groom, evening shots uh, of, um, of an engagement couple. Anything like that, where you wanna have that ambient light in the background and not have flash all over the place, having this Profoto B10 Plus in your kit or B10 uh, is going to allow you just, boom, I grab this one light and I can use it in a multitude uh, of ways. So, that is it. Uh, it's special because actually doing the umbrella for 20% off. So the umbrella you saw is 20% off at B&H, 10% off the B10 or B10 Plus, uh, whether it's a single light or dual light kit. So if you've been thinking about doing it, now is the time to add this. Uh, I'm assuming we have a code for them. B, the code for this 10% discount, if somebody can throw it in chat form, but, uh, but the code is BH1, BH15, BH5 looks one will give you Oh, five looks, I get it now, it took me, yeah. Guys, I'm not always the smartest uh, person in the room. Um, so B&H, BH5 looks one, 
uh, is the code, and you'll get that 10% off and 20% off the uh, the umbrella that, and any of the OCF modifiers and the reflector. Uh, and if you don't, it's a huge deal. Uh, it really is, guys. In all seriousness, this was the goal of today. I got an A1X to give away to you, so hopefully we're ready to draw a name. Um, and don't cut to my screen yet. We're going to do this in a very uh, democratic uh, way. I'm going to go to Google, and I'm going to pick a random number. <laughs> so we had um, 1,472. Okay. Okay, so cut, you can cut, right, but I wanna to talk to everybody. Uh, serious note, hope you learned something. We had a lot of fun today, uh, you know, messing around and I hope, honestly, you understand what I'm doing. I love teaching, I love giving back uh, to our community. It's fun being a photographer, don't ever lose sight of that, don't ever lose that kid in you that experiments and has fun and that's all we did today, right? This was very off script, we just wanted to show you how to use one light in your studio and, and get some cool shots uh, and so I hope you learned something out of it, if you did, Victory is mine, right? That's what it, that's what it's all about. Uh, side note, uh, you know we've got glitch coming up, so if somebody can throw the link in there, if you've enjoyed this, we've got three days of live conferences just like this. Uh, we are going to be broadcasting for three days live in November, and if you signed up now, it's free, so you got nothing to lose. It's glitch.shutterfest.com, uh, and uh, I'd love to see you there. We're going to be doing a lot of these shoots. We've got some big name speakers uh, coming, and they'll be right here in our studio shooting live. I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of virtual conferences claiming to be live and then they're not really live. They're pre-recorded. That's not live. That's not live. Uh, it's just not how it works. So um, we got to pick a winner. Are we ready? Cut to my screen. You are going to see this is going to be done in a completely democratic, no BS way. Okay. The number generated, Alicia, is number 985. So she's scrolling through the spreadsheet of names. And the person who is 985 to register for this, who, who's our winner? Info at jgphoto.be. Info at jgphoto.be. They're in Germany. Can German people win this? Were there any limitations? Well, info at... It's too late now. So give me the email address again. Info at jgphoto.de. It's like that uh, JG Wentworth. I want my money, and I want it now. It's my money, and I want it now. There you go. All right, guys, congratulations to info.ge, de, whatever. You want a pro photo A1X. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, I will send out an email in the next few days just so you can go back to our website and see the final images and how we polish them. But like I said, hopefully you learned one thing. Uh, from today. And uh, again, I look forward to seeing all of you at a future event. Thanks for being here.